Hey guys, it's Merce. Welcome back to my channel where I review horror books with a supernatural focus. In today's video, I am doing a wrap up sort of of my April reads and one that I just finished yesterday. I just felt like combining it. You know, why not? Um, so we're going to be reviewing these good books today. A very strong theme here. Um, mainly they all revolve around a house, which is one of my favorite tropes. And I know that, you know, a lot of people don't like that trope because it can be predictable. So let's go ahead and jump into these reviews. But first, be sure to like and comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on these books if you've read them. And if you haven't subscribed but would like to, please do. Gallows Hill by Darcy Coates. Now, I read a lot of Darcy Coates books and most of them I just really love. I love her creepy coziness. So I usually will just pick them up when I can. But this one I wasn't too sure about because I had heard some feedback about a lot of people not liking this book. However, my least favorite Darcy Coates book, The Carrow House Haunt, I did not like that book. It was very scooby-doo for me but a lot of people love that book so it's just one of those things depending on what kind of reader you are so i didn't know what to expect with this but let me tell you first what it was about this story revolves around margot who has inherited her childhood home including the winery and the property the businesses the employees after her parents have passed away and margot must navigate through this new reality her parents are dead. On top of that, she also has to deal with the trauma of knowing that her parents gave her away willingly. Not only is the house haunted, it's also cursed. And the more nights that she spends there, the weirder and weirder and weirder it gets. She's hearing sounds, she's seeing things, she's finding strange artifacts in the house, and she doesn't know what to think about it. She doesn't know how to make sense of it, but she's going to have to because things start ramping up. Now, the winery that she inherited is the Gallows Hill Winery. And the very special thing about this winery is that they have a very special type of wine they make that is made from these barrels that were made from a tree that used to hang criminals from. Darcy really loves ghouls. It's like one thing that I really enjoy about her writing. Ghouls aren't ghosts and they're not zombies. They're just sort of like the dead reanimated, you know, supernaturally. And with ghouls, you can touch them, you can see them, you can smell them. Um, they, they're very physical, <laughs> you know, they're not just gonna disappear, you know, when you turn the lights on or something. What sets this book apart from most of Darcy Coates' book is that this one isn't as cozy as the other ones. This one definitely has more of a sinister vibe. It's, it's creepier in kind of, I think, a more serious manner. And you can really see this because she takes a lot of time crafting the setting. You know, like she really describes the house, which really makes the house its own character as well. And while the book does have like you know, there are some moments where it feels very convenient, you know, for something to kind of play out. And I was questioning Margot's decisions at times, you know, but it didn't really bother me too much because it was just a really fun ride and I just enjoyed it a lot. The final reveal at the end of the book was very good. It was, how would you put it if you were a wine connoisseur? I think the appropriate term here would be full-bodied. Man, f this house. I knew that this was a funny book going in, but I just didn't really know where it was gonna take me. And it's a wild ride. It, yeah. This story revolves around the Haskins family who have just moved into a new house and it's pretty nice and it's really roomy. It is in another city and it's gonna take some getting used to, but everyone's pretty excited. Things get kind of weird when Sabrina, the wife and mom of the family sees a man in her house pick up one of their moving boxes and ask her where she wants it. She tells him to put it in the basement, thinking that I guess he's just one of the movers and he just decided to hang out. But when she goes down into the basement following right after him, 
he disappears. And that's just the beginning of the madness. This was a real enjoyable read, and it really leans into the family dynamic to make some comedic moments. And when the story finally reveals itself, you're probably going to be a little stunned because I was. I was just like, what? This is one of those horror books where I, I feel like if you love weird horror, you're really going to dig this. It's, it's not scary. It has horror-like moments, but I'd say it's more like weird fiction. And it does get pretty out there towards the end. But some people will definitely find it to be a little too odd for them. I thought it was fun. I mean, it was something that I, I don't think I'd ever read before. Just never read a story like this. And so it, like to be genuinely surprised, you know, about how something is playing out, like, wow, that's pretty cool. Stir of Echoes by Richard Matheson. I picked this up because I really liked the film. And the film is not the same as the book, but it definitely has the vibe, it has the soul. So I, I like both in this instance. This was written in the 1950s, so I wasn't sure what I was gonna get, but I was just like, I don't know. I know it's not gonna be scary because 1950s, but let me tell you what it's about and then I'll tell you what I thought. So this story is about Tom Wallace. Um, him and his wife throw a party and he kind of, he invites like a few neighbors and his wife's brother is there as well. His brother supposedly is able to hypnotize people. So Tom, thinking that it's just a lark, you know, he, he doesn't take it seriously. Go ahead, hypnotize me. He wakes up and realizes that he had been completely hypnotized and been doing a bunch of silly and funny things that his friends and family have been making him do, but he had no memory of it whatsoever. So it's really kind of hard for him to believe it, but everyone is like, Oh, you knew what you were doing. But that night, when everyone is gone and his wife is in bed, he goes into the living room and he sees a ghostly woman in his living room and it freaks him out. So him and his wife are freaking out, trying to figure out, you know, why this is happening. And he thinks, I gotta figure out who this ghost lady is. And so that's kind of like what he thinks might, you know, solve the problem. What really stood out to me the most was like, the pacing was awesome. The storytelling was great. The characters were so well developed. Like they felt like real people having real conversations. And each character had a very strong sense of like self. Like you really felt like you kind of could see it. You could see this person, you know? And there are some scenes in here that are actually kind of disturbing and just dark, creepy. I read this in one day. I had to know, I had to finish it because there are just so many little mysteries that are happening. There's this constant sense of dread, which is very nice. Like I, I really enjoyed that. I think I, I felt like a little bit tense because I kind of just wanted to know like what was happening and it was that dread that was giving me this tension. In the end of this book, there is some character from a dialogue that is unhinged. It is wild. It is so crazy. And like the whole entire time I was thinking Joan Crawford or Elizabeth Taylor would have been a perfect cast for this 1950s. They would have blown it out of the water. I feel like I could say that this is a pretty timeless story. I mean, I don't know how timeless it'll be in like a hundred years. I feel like it's pretty good. Like it still holds really, really well. Like this, God, this was a great read. So I thought this was very good, timeless, creepy, darker than you think it's gonna go and just binge read. The last one is Scratches by Joshua Marcella. I had been eyeing this book for a long time and I think it had been the cover. I just drew me in. As you guys know, I'm a very visual person. I will get uh, completely seduced by covers. I do read the synopses okay and make sure that it's something that I actually want to read. This book takes us on a dark and twisted journey and you're not ready. I wasn't ready. so. You're not ready either, but let me tell you why. <laughs> Janet and her son Connor have moved into her childhood home. But for Janet, it's a very difficult decision to make because this was a place of trauma and horror for her. 
but her and Connor don't have a lot of money. So without a lot of options, this is the best thing that she could offer her kid. Connor decides that he wants to take the basement as his bedroom because he's a teenager and he wants to be as far away from his mom as possible. And you know, basements are cool, right? I, I, I would stay in a basement, not this basement. But once he gets everything set up in there and he stays his first night in there, he sees something in there, like something in the basement and it's terrifying. He tells his mom as she brushes it off. You've been reading too many horror comics. Too many horror movies. But this figure or whatever it was that Connor was seeing, he continues to see. So first things first, this has trigger warnings, has graphic violence, SA, child abuse. The relationship between Connor and his mom is like really nice. Connor is very sympathetic, understanding, which is not something we see that often with teenagers in, in books, you know, it, it's either like the kids are way too perfect. Oh, mommy, I'm so good. Future serial killer. Or they're like just dumb as rocks, you know, or like just so mean. And so sometimes it's nice to just see like a relationship like this where it wasn't too cloying. It was just, you know, a caring relationship, which was cool. If you're a horror fan, you'll definitely like this because it has, it drops like some horror fan stuff in there, you know, that are just the, that, you know, only I think fans would really appreciate. And he also goes to a comic book store and has this really fun conversation with the guy there, which I just thought was awesome. He's definitely smart and inquisitive though, which sort of leads him down this path of finding something horrible, like really horrible, like, whoa, Nelly, horrible. It definitely puts you like in this weird position because you are witnessing, you know, the relationship between Connor and his mom. Connor is sort of on his own and you're like, yeah, go find out. A few moments later. No, 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 put it back, put it back, put it back, put it back. I liked it. It made me uncomfortable. So that was my wrap up of April and a little bit of May. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below and please take care of yourselves. Look out for each other and I will talk to you next time.